the main connection between derivative and the original function is the following. Derivative is positive, implies function is increasing. Derivative is negative, implies function is decreasing. So in order to investigate where a function is increasing or decreasing, we're going to be investigating whenever derivative is positive or negative, and that implies where intervals where a function will be increasing and decreasing. Let me illustrate that on a simple example of quadratic function. Uh, say we have function f of x, which is x squared plus 8x plus 12. And we want to find out, find intervals on which this given function is increasing and also intervals on which is decreasing. Let's see how we're going to do this case. First step is we're going to be finding the derivative. Should not be difficult because it is a polynomial. So j of x squared is 2x, j of x is 1, so derivative is 2 x plus 8. Now we want to see where derivative is positive and negative. So to do that, uh, we set derivative equals to 0. We have 2x plus 8 equals to 0, so 8 equals to negative 4. And also, in general, we'll have to do where derivative does not exist. We don't have to worry about that in this case because it's phenomenal. Uh, we want to see where derivative equals to 0 and where derivative does not exist. That's where points where derivative might change its sign from positive to negative and from negative to positive. That's why the concern about these type of points. So in our case, uh, we get only one point to worry about x equals to negative 4. So what we want to do is we want to see on these two intervals when our derivative is positive or negative, and that will imply when our function is increasing or decreasing. So pick our test point, say derivative at 0, plug in, in get 8, equal in 0, plus plug in, in uh, say negative 5 as a sample point, test point for this second interval to the left of negative 4. So we get 2 times negative 5 plus 8, which will be less than 0, so minus here. So what we've got is derivative is positive to the right from negative 4, negative from the left of negative 4, so function is increasing and decreasing correspondingly on both intervals. So we already tried out the answer. F of x is increasing on from negative 4 to plus infinity and decreasing on interval from negative infinity to negative 4. So to summarize our investigation. So in general, uh, what's going to be our steps? To see if function is increasing or decreasing. To see where f of x is increasing slash decreasing. Our first step is to find right? Then we want to investigate where f prime equals to zero, and also where f prime does not exist. That those points are going to divide our all number line into subintervals, and now for each subintervals, those points comes from where derivative equals to zero or derivative does not exist. Now. These points will divide the whole number line into subintervals. Now, in which subinterval we define uh, whenever derivative is positive or negative, and correspondingly, function is going to be increasing or decreasing. So, we check sample points for each interval, test points for each interval, correspondingly. 
derivative will be positive for negative on each interval, and correspondingly, quantum will be increasing or decreasing in corresponding intervals. And maybe, what's well, that? And maybe just one more definition before we move on. Definition of critical point. Definition point A and F of A is called a critical point. Critical point of y equals f of x if f prime of a equals to zero or f prime of a does not exist. Uh, so basically, uh, critical points is where derivative equals to zero or derivative does not exist. So what those points are? Those points are possible candidates for extrema value. Uh, because that's candidates for where derivative is going to change its sign. If derivative will change its sign, then at this point, function might have it max or min. Uh, often we're going to be abusing notation and we will say critical point and we'll use only x coordinate or point. I will say x equals a is critical point. Although to be more technically correct, we should say it's critical value. Alright. Uh, so, critical point, often I'm going to be using JCP, is a candidate for extreme. Okay, that's, that's how we're going to treat it. Okay, so let me write down a couple more examples on how, how to find intervals of increase and decrease and critical points and classify them. find intervals of increase, decrease, critical points, classify First example of x cubed minus 12x plus 7. x cubed minus 12x plus 7. So, our steps are going to be still the same. Find derivative. Polynomial is easy. 3x squared minus 12. Set derivative equals to 0. Set derivative does not exist. Tax notes on these we don't have to worry because it's polynomial. Equals to 0, we'll have to solve it. Divide both sides by 4. x squared minus. Divide both sides by 3. x squared minus 4 equals to 0 x squared equals to 4, x equals plus or minus 2, so x equals plus or minus 2, so we have negative 2, we have 2. Uh, now we check out test points, pick something on the first middle interval 0, we get minus 12, so minus, pick something like 5, 3 times 5 squared minus 12, we get positive. Uh, pick something like negative 5, 3 times negative 5 squared is 25. 75 minus 12 is positive. So our original function will be increasing, decreasing, and increasing correspondingly on these intervals. So we are ready to classify uh, and answer on the questions. So Functions increasing on interval from negative infinity to negative 2 plus, from 2 to plus infinity. Decreasing on interval from negative 2 to 2. Uh, critical points. Critical points. x equals to negative 2, x equals to 2, plug in negative 2 and 2 into this one, we can find if needed corresponding values of y, corresponding values of y, plugging in 2 we get 8 minus, 8 minus 24 plus 7 minus 9, 
and plugging in uh, negative 2, you get negative 8 plus 24 plus 7, I believe we got 21. So we get critical points. We also want to classify those critical points. And classification is, should not be difficult to do, just looking at what is happening. Say if you want to concentrate what is happening at x equals negative 2, you see function is increasing up to this point, and that's decreasing after that. So at x equals negative 2, we should have max. And at x equals 2, decreasing before it, increasing right after it. So at x equals negative 2, at x equals negative 2, we should have mean. That's how we're going to classify them. We got our critical points x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. We've corresponding values of y. And we classify them uh, at x equals negative 2 we have max, at x equals 2 we have mean. And we found it in most of increase, decrease. <coughs> Next example we want to consider is uh, finding intervals of increase, decrease, critical points, classified critical points of function g of x, which is x times square root of x squared plus 1. We're going to be proceeding as we did just a second ago. First step is to find the derivative. Now we have to follow the product rule, x squared plus 1 plus uh, x and derivative of x squared plus 1, uh, chain rule 2 over x squared plus 1, derivative of inside is 2x, 2 and 2 will be cancelled out, so we have square root of x squared plus 1 plus x over square root of x squared plus 1. So we get a expression for derivative square root of x squared plus 1 plus oops, should be x squared here because x times x is x squared x squared over square root of x squared plus 1 um, find the common denominator square root of x squared plus 1 square root of x squared plus 1 squared plus x squared so we get 2x squared plus 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. Because x squared plus 1 squared, square root can be cancelled out, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 0. So, derivative equals to 0. Derivative equals to 0 in this case because we have fraction means numerator equals to 0. We don't have to worry about. Derivative does not exist. Uh, x squared plus 1 is always positive, so we don't have to worry about square root. And x squared plus 1 is always positive, at least 1, so we don't have to worry about denominators. So no critical points whatsoever. So we have just number line, and a whole number line. Derivative is picking any value for x. Simple one is 0, 1 on top, 1 on bottom, so it's positive function is increasing on from negative infinity to plus infinity. So, no critical points. G of x increasing from negative infinity to plus infinity. 